few minutes to tell someone why it is that doing uh, surgical support uh, so that you could imagine healing. What, in your own words, has been your experience with that, and what would you want someone to know? Are you rolling? Uh-huh. Ah. There's so many things I'd want you to know. I would want you to know that, um, that it's real, that, it's, that it happens, that it's not... Uh, um, Oh, Deb, I can't, when you're doing that, I can't, I can't get it. Um, we can edit out anything that doesn't work, so just relax into it and imagine that a patient that you saw that was struggling was sitting right in front of you and that you knew something that would make a difference in their lives. I would say what I said to Mary up at U of M, that always remember, if you cut your finger, it's going to heal. And if you let the mind and body work together, they will heal you. You have to believe it. You have to live it. And I guess that's what I would say. And Jane, what was it like for you when you started um, using your imagination to to help you heal? Uh, you know, you you've used some visualizations. Uh. Oh, I, I when I first started to heal, of course, was the cut finger, and I vision I envisioned it healing overnight. Mm -hmm. um, I envisioned uh, with the uh, tumors in the, in the liver, I envisioned a, a pink, whole, healthy tumor. And I think the one thing that was uh, that's important to me is that you told me, and I was almost angry at you, when you said, Jane, you have to learn to love your cancer. And I was, I was not happy when I left your office that day. And I got home, and Fred and I walked, and he and I said, you know, and I expressed, I said, I, I'm not going to learn to love this. What can she be thinking? And Fred just said, well, you know, he said, Janie, those are your cells. Those belong to you. They're sick. They can't stay. But they're still your cells. And I said, it, it makes a whole difference in the way you think. Those are my sick little cells. They have to either be healed or they have to, to leave. Um, and that, that was an eye-opener for me when I learned to love my body and love the cancer as well. That took some doing. Mm -hmm. And um, Swiss cheese, do I remember that you kind of saw, um, am, am I remembering that correctly? Yes, because they told me that when the tumors go, there would just be holes. And so I did. I imagined a, a piece of... Swiss cheese with just holes in it, mm -hmm. and um, uh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. I did. And and Jane, because people won't know until they read your story, they won't know. How long ago was it that we met, that we connected, that you started on this journey? It was in nineteen ninety nine. Wow. I believe, yeah. because it wasn't the first surgery, it was the second surgery, yeah. and then they told me there was nothing more they could do. The, the doctors told you there the, was nothing? The doctor said that yeah, I'd gone as far as he could take me, and they couldn't do any more surgery. Um, I went to Ann Arbor, there was nothing they could do for me there, but then Dr. Costin, when I went back to Dr. Costin, he said, I want you to find a holistic healer. He said, there's something to it. I don't know what. But he said, I think you need to. Your head's not in the right place. Mm -hmm. It's in a very bad place. I did. I came right home from a dear, dear friend of mine, Debbie Greenman. Um, I remembered uh, and called her, and she gave me your name. And um, the first thing you ever told me was to think of my finger. You couldn't see me till the next week, but to think of a cut finger and how it was going to heal. And that actually started me on this journey and I did so well that the, that Dr. Costin said you know I think we can do this and he did the next surgery and um, uh, and it was a successful successful uh. and you used if I remember correctly you used the image of um, a favorite place of yours I do when I um, when I'm going into surgery or when I'm in a very bad place, uh, the mountains in Ure, Colorado is right where I go to. And, and the colors of the... 
all the colors. In fact, I think of those colors throughout my body. Yeah. Not just my liver, but throughout my whole body. The, the blue sky. The, and the pinks and the, the, yeah. the, the um, red rocks. Red rocks. And, yeah. and I do, and I think of that as is yeah. my body. Yeah. Um, Wonderful. Well, thank you, Jane. And it's, it's a privilege to actually witness you living this and living it for well over 10 years now, heading on your second. A little later, Jane shared about her experience with the audio support. And I think it's worth having you hear in her own words what she had to say about that. Mine is called pre and post surgical support. Okay. With SCS, so you you worked with uh, the audio, the CD, the tape. I was able to take it into the operating room, and that was that was amazing. I could feel it as I was as I was going to sleep, and that ta and, and your voice was talking, and I felt when I woke up, I felt so refreshed and so good. It, that was amazing. That was amazing. I forgot that. Whatever it is that brought you to Imagine Healing, I am grateful that my own life, I consider it as though I'm one beggar showing another beggar how to find bread. When I was diagnosed with degenerative disc disease, L4, L5, S1, and osteoarthritis in the hip, and told that I would never have quality of life. I'm grateful that this journey, I was able to discover the healing power within, and that's my sincere hope for you, that whatever it is that brought you here, that you now know how to take the right steps to bring more healing in your life. In the same way that Jane said, this is real, it happens, you can do it. I sincerely uh, welcome your comments, your questions, share your success stories with us, and enjoy the process that for your own life, for your own health, that you can now imagine healing.